Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to all of you on this third Sunday in our Easter season, and it is so good to see you, and I see all those little children at the back, and I, for folks who don't know, Kurt and Kim, and their two little uh, children, Madison and Emily, Welcome to your faith family today. It's so good to see you. And uh, Kurt has had some health problems, and uh, uh, Bambi will be writing us up uh, a praise report in a couple of weeks. So that, that will uh, just give us a lot to celebrate at that time. But right now, we welcome everyone, and we are, it is a blessing to be together. So let us take time now to just put aside all, all the things that have busied our day and our week. Just put them aside, let them go, take a deep breath in, and allow this time of quietude to prepare you for the loving and grace and entry of our God. Music, we 
thank you, God, for all these ways in which you talk to our hearts. And so, may we listen deeply with our hearts, our minds, our ears today, and may we be refreshed and renewed as we leave this place of worship. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus the Christ, who teaches us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs>
three long days on the road. Many delays due to construction, traffic jams, accidents. We arrived at the border with all the proper documents in hand, exhausted and thinking it seemed like a long, impossible situation we were facing to clear customs. However, after surrendering our passports to the officer, my daughter explained the situation to him and asked his advice. He went back into the booth and returned almost immediately, handed us our passports and said to my daughter, my deepest sympathy, you're good to go. What seemed to be an almost impossible situation in three, two, ve three very tired people turned into a very possible situation. God is with us. He is our co-pilot. God is good. <laughs> and all the time. Amen, amen. Well, for all the children here and there and everywhere today, it is so good to see you. And um, I know that some of you are in school. And even if you're not in school, you probably sat down with your mom or dad or grand or grandpa and they've taught you a little bit about math. And so they'll maybe do that by saying, oh look, here's, here's uh, four apples, all right? So if I take two apples over there, well then how many apples do I have left? And yeah, yeah, that's right, two, that's right. And in order to prove that it's two, then they say, let's take those other two away, and then you're left with no apples, right? So it's kind of adding and subtracting, and that's kind of neat to do. Well, in the gospel lesson today, Jesus says to his disciples, you know, would you please prove to me all the love that you have and how much you are going to follow me. And uh, one of the things that he said to Simon Peter, he said, Simon, Feed my lambs. And then he said again, Simon, tend my sheep. And then finally he said, Simon, feed my sheep. And by that, Jesus was saying, when we follow Jesus, our way of proving that is sharing our love with other people, sharing God's goodness with other people. So if that means that you're going to have a bunch of new friends in Sunday school this morning, that'll be great, eh? And so that's sharing God's love. <coughs> Uh, and when you get somebody new in your school and you're kind to them, that's sharing God's love. If you see somebody who's a little bit hungry and they don't have an apple or an orange, that's sharing God's love when you do that. So what we do to show our love for Jesus is to share our love with other people. So I'd ask you to remember that this week as you go into a, a brand new week 
in the Easter season. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for giving us ways to show our love for you and for others. Bless us this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 1 to 6, and I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Bible. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Saul, or Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogue at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. 
But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. Let us have a time of quiet musical reflection. Our Gospel lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 1 to 19. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat. But that night, they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach. But the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging a net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there, with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them, and though they were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Simon or Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than thee? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, 
tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hand and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. May God bless these readings to our understanding and to God's name be all honor and glory this day and forever. Amen. <laughs> When life gets difficult, when we become lost, confused, and afraid, when the changes of life are not what we wanted or think we deserve, we tend to run away. We try to go back to the way it was before, to something safe, something familiar. Often we revert back to an old pattern of behavior and thinking. Even when we know better, we do not want to go backwards. It seems easier than moving forward. Peter and the six others have returned to the sea. They have left Jerusalem. They have come home to the Sea of Tiberias, the place where it all began. Discipleship, the upper room, the cross, the empty tomb, 
the house with its locked door, or some 80 miles to the south. Peter decides to go fishing. He knows how to do that. Perhaps it takes him back to life before Jesus. And the others are quick to join him. My hunch, however, is that Peter is not really trying to catch fish as much as he is fishing for answers. We can leave the places and even the people of our life, but we can never escape ourselves, our own life. Wherever you go, there you are. Peter may have left Jerusalem, but he cannot get away from three years of discipleship, the Last Supper, the arrest, or charcoal fire, denial, and a crowing rooster. He cannot leave behind the cross the empty tomb, the house with doors locked tight, the echoes of peace be with you. So he fishes, Peter fishes for answers. What, what have I done? What were those three years all about. Who was Jesus? Where is he? Who am I? What will I do now? Where will I go? What will happen to me now? Peter is searching for meaning, for a way forward, a place in life. Peter is fishing in the dark of night. We have all spent time fishing in the dark of night, asking the same question as Peter, looking for our place in life, seeking peace and some sense of understanding and meaning. More often than not, dark night fishing happens in the context of failure, losses, and sorrow in our lives. It happens when we come face to face with the things we have done and left undone. We have all been there, fishing for answers in the darkness. Children, you have no fish, have you? Jesus said. This is more than a statement of fact, more a statement of fact than it is a question. Jesus is not asking for a fishing report. He is commenting on the reality and emptiness of Peter's and the other disciples' lives. Peter is living in the pain and the past of Good Friday. He is fishing on the Good Friday side of the boat and the net is empty. There are no fish, no answer, 
no way forward. The nets of dark night fishing contain nothing to feed or nourish life. I wonder if any of us have ever been fishing on the wrong side of the boat. Jesus seems to suggest so when he said, cast your net on the right side of the boat. The resurrection side of the boat. This movement of the net from one side of the boat to the other symbolizes the disciple resurrection. It is the great Passover. Jesus calls us to move out of error into truth and out of death into life. In so doing, we see and proclaim it is the Lord, and emptiness gives away to the abundance of a net full of fish. Large ones, 153 of them. Darkness ends with the dawn of a new day, with God's light all around us. A new charcoal fire kindled hospitality in place of the cold ashes of rejection. The Last Supper has become the first breakfast. Confessions of love overcome denial of fear. It is the Lord. Fishing in the dark of night is over. This is Easter. Yes, Good Friday is real. Pain and death are a reality of life. But the greater and final reality is Easter resurrection. Follow me, Jesus said, and live as resurrected people. Follow me and fish in a different place. Follow me. Follow me is the invitation to examine where we have been fishing. On which side of the boat do we fish? On which side of the cross do we live? Good Friday or Easter Sunday? Let us follow Jesus today into Easter Resurrection, for it is here in the light of resurrection life that we find God and the living Christ everywhere. And if we are open to that living presence, we can see and talk with Jesus and serve him and be served by him in all the places we choose to enter. In fact, the ordinary around us becomes sacred because it is in these places that we meet the living Christ. Christ is here today with each one of us. And Christ will be with you 
as you leave this place today. Christ will be with you at work. He will be where you live. And he will be where you laugh and celebrate. Christ will be laughing with you in times of joy. And he will be comforting you when there are tears of sorrow in your eyes. You will see him where you go. You will hear him calling to you in the words of the hungry and the lonely and the hurting. You will see him working miracles in the actions of healers and teachers and in the comfort of your neighbors. You will also find Jesus in your midst as you break bread at each and every meal. He is in all the ordinary events of each of our lives. The mystery and wonder of God and the living presence of Christ are with you, are with me, today and every day, in every moment. This is God's word for us this day. All thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Most holy and beloved God, we gather today aware that there are times when we have gone night searching, looking for the answer on the wrong side of the boat, on the Good Friday side of our lives. But God, we are your Easter people. We are people who live in the Easter resurrection. Help us to form our ideas, to make our choices, to live our lives in the Easter resurrection. May we reach out to all of those who have a need and may we share your love with all those around us. We pray for our world today, God, a world in which there are so many indignities, intolerance, homelessness, violence directed at people around the world. And we think in particular of Ukraine and the assault that they go through day by day. We ask God that you be their strength, their purpose, the compassion that just saturates them with your holy presence. We ask as well, God, that you be with NATO, the United Nations, and the European Union as they work with Ukraine in making decisions that resolve the conflict and bring about peace, well-being, stability, and decency to every life there. 
We pray for our communities as well of Morgan Point and Porksville East United Churches. May we live our lives filled with joy, peace, hope, and the assurance of your goodness and grace and all that we do. We now lift up to you God's prayers from the silence of our hearts. Let us now pray in silence. We thank you, God, for hearing and responding to these, our prayers, in Jesus' name, Amen.